going to introduce Sheriff Val Nienheis. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, today, I have the very, very distasteful task of releasing some details into two separate criminal investigations. And unfortunately, both of these investigations are against our own here at the Hernando County Sheriff's Office. Uh, one investigation has been going on for just a day or two over a month, and the other one's been going on for several months. Both of them involve misappropriation or theft of funds. The first one I'm going to talk about today has to do with money that was actually stolen from my deputies and others who donated to the local uh, Fraternal Order of Police. The second case we'll talk about has to do with a theft of taxpayers' money, uh, specifically <clears throat> vice expense money and vice buy money. Uh, you know, this betrayal of trust has left me angry, it has left me frustrated, but most of all, it's left me disappointed. Both of these individuals took an oath, and both of them have betrayed that oath. The first one I'm going to talk about has to do with the Fraternal Order of Police. Uh, back in April, although there were some rumors prior to that, but back in April, uh, my administration was made aware that there might be some improprieties at the Fraternal Order of Police. <clears throat> And we had, uh, to give you a little background, it's uh, Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 164 of the Nature Coast. And they not only serve the Hernando County Sheriff's Office deputies, they also serve uh, Citrus County Sheriff's Office and the Brooksville Police Department. And we uh, recommended that they uh, do some investigation on their own, obtaining bank records and so forth, and, and give those to my administration for further uh, review. Unfortunately, they ran into some difficulties with the bank. The bank uh, was not as forthcoming as we would have liked or they would have liked. So uh, in August, we began a criminal investigation. We were concerned with some statute of limitation issues and, uh, and so forth. So we went ahead and started a criminal investigation and we subpoenaed uh, several records relating to uh, the operation of the Fraternal Order of Police. <clears throat> And although we found very many suspicious transactions, uh, one that really caught our attention was with the uh, Scott Beerweiler Memorial Fund. And most of you probably know that uh, uh, Captain Beerweiler was killed uh, several years ago on his way to work in the line of duty, and this was a fund that was set up to help his family. Very quickly, the investigation began to focus on Deputy Mike Gladfelter. And for, the, for a little bit of background, uh, Deputy Gladfelter started uh, here in February of 1989. He's been with the agency 24 years, and he's worked at patrol and a couple other areas. Um, he was a treasurer of the Fraternal Order of Police from 2006 until approximately January of 2010. And our investigation revealed uh, a detective from our, our uh, major case economic crimes area found that uh, from uh, June 21st of 2006 until March 10th of 2010, we found at least 60, 60 ATM cash withdrawals using the FOP debit card. And those transactions totaled uh, a little over $8,300. We also found, when we were looking, dozens of personal transactions using the same uh, credit debit card from 2006 to 2010. And those purchases were at stores such as Walmart, Target, Circuit City, Sam's Club, and several online outlets. Purchases that included contact lenses, car parts, tobacco products, electronics, and personal grocery items. And those purchases totaled a little over $5,700. And then on a, we also found that on a, uh, November 7th of 2011, 
$1,041 was taken out of the Scott Weiler, Scott Beerweiler rather, memorial fund, closing that account. And this was several months after Deputy Gladfelter uh, gave up being treasurer. So he wasn't even uh, a treasurer of the FOP at the time that this was closed. And we found out that he had closed it and obtained cash from that fund. We, of course, interviewed witnesses and FOP board members. And we quickly realized that Deputy Gladfelter, of course, did not have consent to do any of these transactions. <clears throat> A few days ago, on December 20th, um, Deputy Gladfelter was interviewed by the case detective, and he made several admissions to the fraudulent acts he had commit committed, including changing the electronic bookkeeping records that were maintained by him, uh, altering those records to make the transactions appear more legitimate in the FOP books. On December 26th, yesterday, Deputy Gladfelter, after being noticed that he would likely be terminated today, tendered his resignation. It was effective immediately yesterday. We were working closely with the state's attorney through this whole investigation, and we had a warrant also issued yesterday, late yesterday, for his arrest for two counts. The first was grand theft, which is a third degree felony. And the second was organized scheme to defraud, which is also a third degree felony. Both of those have a maximum of up to five years in prison and up to $5,000 fine. Um, <clears throat> former Deputy Gladfelter turned himself in this morning at approximately 9.30 a.m. to the Citrus County Detention Center and has since bonded out on a $4,000 bail. The second case that we've been dealing with has been going on just over a month. Uh, over a month. It basically started on November 25th of 2013 when uh, Major Terry heard some rumors that there may be some improprieties in vice. Namely, those rumors surrounded uh, Sergeant Joe Reed and that he was borrowing which is actually stealing, but borrowing vice-issued currency uh, in one instance was in the neighborhood, the rumor went, of about $1,500. To give you a little background on Sergeant Joe Reed, he's a 12-year veteran. He started in February of 2001. He, um, he was a, a patrol deputy, a vice detective. Uh, he went back to uh, detective and patrol or I'm sorry, back to patrol in 2009, and in 2009, July of 2009, he was promoted to sergeant, and he was assigned to vice narcotics where he's been ever since. Unfortunately, the rumor also included the fact that Lieutenant Garcia, his immediate supervisor, was aware and may have actually assisted in covering up the discrepancies. The and the way he was covering them up, as the rumor went, is that he was using some of his personal funds to reimburse the agency for the money that was missing. We also heard the rumor that uh, Sergeant Reed made it commonplace to borrow money from his subordinates. Um, we weren't exactly sure whether it was personal money and or uh, vice money that they would use for buys but that was part of the, the rumor that Major Terry heard. Well, he immediately uh, briefed myself and my chief deputy, and um, he asked for uh, another hour or two to do a little bit of checking, which he did, came back and found that um, the rumors seemed to have some merit. So later on that day, uh, we put both Sergeant Reed and Lieutenant Garcia that now Captain Garcia, recently promoted Captain Garcia, on administrative leave with pay pending the outcome of both the criminal and the administrative investigation.
we gave the case to Lieutenant Kearney, who has been working diligently. I will tell you that as he started to get into this and find out that there might be some legitimacy to it, uh, he even uh, canceled most of his vacations. So I got to give a lot of credit to him. But later that same day, on November 25th, um, as I said, we put them on administrative leave. And from that time until the present, investigation has revealed that on at least one occasion, over $1,000 came up missing. And uh, this was, again, we believe that then Lieutenant Garcia uh, reimbursed that money to make the books come out right. And it dates back as far as June of 2011. The investigation, as you might imagine, has moved very quickly and there's still a lot of investigation to do, but we have uncovered some uh, very suspicious activity that we believe are fraudulent entries into his uh, bookkeeping uh, for his vice money um, using uh, different ways to get the money eventually back into his uh, for his personal use. Um, and again, that's still ongoing, but we have been working very closely with the state's attorney's office. We believe that at least $2,784.70 was misappropriated. And um, we also, immediately that same day that they were put on administrative leave, we closed all the books and vice. We accounted for every penny that all the uh, detectives had, and I'm happy to report that there were no material discrepancies found with any of the money that was possessed by any of the detectives, any buy money. We were able to account for all that. On uh, December 26th, yesterday, we um, had a, a KPS issued for one count of grand theft of more than $300, but less than $20,000. And that also is a third degree felony. Um, the maximum penalty is, uh, again, five years in prison and $5,000. And he, uh, is my understanding, uh, also yesterday, Sergeant Reed tendered his resignation, so he is no longer an employee of the Sheriff's Office. And uh, it's my understanding that he has turned himself in. He may still be at the Sisters County Jail uh, working on bonding himself out on a $2,000 bond. We all hear rumors of law enforcement cover-ups and law enforcement officers protecting their own. But we're here today to give confidence, confidence to our citizens as well as the men and women of the sheriff's office are doing the right thing every day, that we can and we will hold our own accountable for their actions. As sheriff, I have two major obligations. I have to balance my first obligation, which is to protect the public from corrupt actions of my deputies. But I have to balance that with my equally important obligation of protecting my deputies from false allegations. When there are clear signs, however, of criminal wrongdoing, we are always going to work diligently to bring the violators to justice. In short, my deputies are treated differently. They're held to a much higher standard. With that, I'll do my best to answer any questions that I can. In the case of the stolen money from um, the memorial fund that was going to a family, I mean, how does that make the department feel? Well. <clears throat> You hear a cliche about tarnishing the badge. I can't think of anything that fits more appropriately. Uh, again, a lot of people are very upset. The people in the know, and I'm sure that much more people now today, when this gets public, are going to be very, very upset. When you when you steal money from a widow and her family, particularly the widow of somebody who died serving their county, it's it's tough. It's tough, and it, and it's, it makes us very angry and very disappointed. Will your office be begin fundraising for that family again? Um, that's something we have, we've been so busy with this, we haven't talked about. I will say that the, the, the fund obviously was close to being depleted. Uh, why that money wasn't given to her, 
Um, I don't know, but um, my guess is is that um, the state's attorney is probably in a situation like this, if at all possible, going to try to get restitution, and we'll do everything we can to make sure that that money goes to the right place if restitution is ordered and is collected. Did, uh, did he give any reason why he did this, an explanation? No. Um, no, I, I think, uh, you know, I have, some, I have some very good, very good people here who had most of the answers to the questions before the interview began. And I think um, what I'm being told is that uh, the interview started pretty innocuously. And um, he soon realized um, that, um, that he, was, he was caught. And he admitted to several other things. And then the interview was concluded uh, during the middle of the pretty much the middle of the interview, but uh, I, I don't think we got into any motive other than why does anybody steal money anytime? Uh, greed, I guess. Well, sometimes, Sheriff, things, you know, start off taking a little cash out to buy lunch and you put it back, and, uh, and other times it's a concerted plot. I mean, well, I, I would say in both cases we have pretty good evidence that it might have started that way, but it ended up with uh, a significant amount of uh, cover-up, uh, over actions to cover and hide and uh, change books and so forth. So, uh, you know, how it started out, I guess uh, these things, you know, everybody has an excuse, but it's still a crime. And technical question on the first uh, case, is it organized scheme to defraud a first degree felony? I thought it was, uh, I am being told that it is both of them are third degree felony. I'll double check on that and I'll get you that. It can, be. Saying it can be. I think it has to do with the dollar amount and I don't think we've reached that threshold yet. So, Thank you, and I don't know if we ever will. So, Thank you, yes, ma'am. In the second case um, with the FOP uh, or with the, with the vice money that it was being replaced. Was the total amount replaced or is some, is, um, is that unknown? It does not appear. There's some indication that there is some money that has not been accounted for. On the second case, uh, are there any pending investigations that they were involved with or past convictions that might come into question because of um, what they've done? Because he was a sergeant, I don't think that he was an integral part of any case, but I, I'm not aware of that. We've been so focused on uh, getting to the bottom of this case, we haven't really. And obviously we wanted to keep some details quiet uh, until we could interview appropriate people and make sure that we uh, don't give people time to you know, change the story and so forth. So um, I don't have any indication right now that there will be any effective, but there possibly could be. Sheriff, you've talked about your, your professional obligation uh, to your deputies. Did you know either or both of these people personally? And then uh, if so, how does that make you feel? Well, absolutely. I, I, I wouldn't say I knew them on a personal level, but I definitely have interacted with both of them many times. And um, as I said, the biggest, biggest emotion that I'm feeling is disappointment. You know, these are people that uh, not only I, but their federal, fellow deputies and, and civilian employees and the public have put a lot of trust in. And it, it hurts going forward because uh, it gives credence to those people who assume that law enforcement does these things, which I can tell you is the exception, the, the very, very rare exception, not the rule. Sure, two sure. questions. Captain Garcia's uh, fate. What's that? What's going to happen with Captain Garcia? Um, Captain Garcia is still on administrative leave. Uh, we don't have right now any indication of any uh, criminal uh, wrongdoing. Uh, there's obviously some major concerns about some policy violations. And now that the criminal cases are winding down, we'll begin the internal administrative cases and we'll take appropriate action based on what we find there. Was he friends with Sergeant Reed? I mean, did he indicate, I mean, to take money, your know, personal money, and try to cover for someone, I mean, it's a lot of money. Well, I, I will tell you that it is no secret, obviously, based on what I've told you already of um, Sergeant Reed borrowing money and so forth. So, um, you know, it was, uh, and everybody has an opinion on whether uh, his money problems were uh, 
uh, induced or beyond its control, and I won't speak to those, but uh, probably initially, I, if I had to guess, it was uh, probably twofold. Maybe he felt a little sorry for him, but he also didn't want to rock the boat, and that's the only two motives I can think of as far as the lieutenant goes. Can you expand on those money problems that Sergeant Reynolds? Just typical having a lot more bills than the money coming in. So, anyway, I thought I saw another question. Uh, yes, did you, did, has, uh, has uh, uh, Sergeant Reed been in, interviewed and did he um, confess or? He has not been interviewed. Okay. <clears throat> All right, if there were not any other questions, if you do have any that come up, uh, please feel free to contact Denise Maloney, my PIO, I believe she's got some uh, rough copies of, uh, obviously we were moving very quickly over the last few days, but uh, she's given you uh, probably most of what I've said uh, verbally she has in writing. So thank you all for coming out and uh, covering this. And uh, again, we'll answer any questions that come up in the day. You just contact uh, Denise. Thank you all. Thank you, Denise.